What I find today, though, is that people want to use the term because they crave the authority, the hunger to have people follow you and want to obey you, want you to tell them what to believe. I don't understand that. What are the four or five different types of apostles in the New Testament? Okay. Well, there's the original 12. And, of course, Judas was replaced, you know, in, at the beginning of the book of Acts. So there, there's this, there's the 12. And, and, and the replacement had to be somebody who had lived with, you know, lived at the time of the original 12 apostles and, and you know, followed the Lord around. I mean, had, had to have personal contact with Jesus and so on and so forth. So there's actually there's actually a criteria criterion or a litmus test in Acts one to replace um, Judas. So there's that original group. Then there's if, if you go to First Corinthians uh, fifteen, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that He was buried, that He was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the 12. So we have Peter, who was one of the 12. So he appears to Peter, then one, of, then, the, then the 12. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. So we've got Peter, and then the 12, and then these 500. And then it says, then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. So there's a third group here. It's not the 12. Okay. There's, it's not the 12. It's not, it's not the 11 plus one, you know, that, that followed up later. It's not even the 500, you know, like, like who, who would that be? But there's another group of apostles here. So you've got the 12, you've got people like Paul and, and Silas. Silas is called an apostle in, in one passage as well. Uh, people who traveled, you know, with, with Paul there, there's, some debate as to whether we, we could call them apostles or not. Some, with some, it's clearer than others. And then all these other apostles that, that would be along with James. Well, James is the Lord's brother. James was not one of the original twelve. Okay, he would have come later. But apparently, this has some connection to Jerusalem. Okay, the, the people actually doing ministry in the Jerusalem church, while the original twelve. They do ministry in the Jerusalem church, but they also travel, at least according to church tradition, later on in their, in their lives. And then last of all, as one untimely born, he appeared also to me. I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. So whatever Paul was, he excludes himself from James and that group of apostles. He excludes himself from the twelve. Uh, and if, if you actually looked up apostle in the New Testament, there are there are passages where it, it it really looks like what's being described is what we would call a missionary, someone who is sent for a specific task to a local church, either to start a church or to minister to a church in some way. So is that what is being talked about in verse seven here, or is that what what, what how Paul would would look at himself? Again, Paul does claim apostleship. He, like in Second Corinthians, he he makes a lot of a lot of argumentation in his own defense as being an apostle, but he wasn't part of these other groups. But he still uses the term. So, again, with, without this isn't a place for a lesson on what an apostle is or isn't and how to do that. But but those are your basic categories. There's also false apostles. Um, at least in one passage, you know, where you have people who claim to be apostles and really aren't, they're false teachers. So th there, there's your panoply of, of apostle. Um, I tend to think that in, in, in our day and age, we're, we're not taught, we should not be using the word apostle as though we, we considered anybody alive today to be at the level of the 12. We also shouldn't be considering anybody alive today at the level of James and, and the, either the rest of the 12 or others you know, who ministered in the Jerusalem church, we also shouldn't be using the word apostle at the level of somebody like Paul. We could use the word apostle if, if, we, if what we were thinking of is something like a missionary, somebody sent to, you know, from one congregation or a group of churches to another church. 
you know, to do ministry. And that's all it is. It's all an apostle is. So what I find today, though, is that people want to use, use the term because they crave the authority. I don't understand why people crave authority. I really don't. It's something that's, that I stumble over all the time. That the, 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 the hunger to have people follow you and, and, and want to obey you, want you to tell them what to believe. I don't understand that. 